Well, let's uh, stay with that story and talk to former Federal Reserve and White House economist Claudia Sam. Welcome to the program. Great to see you. So uh, we now know that Donald Trump will be the next U.S. president and we are expecting him to bring in tariffs and tax cuts, both of which could end up pushing up inflation. So what do you think all of that could end up meaning for the U.S. Fed and for interest rates? Right, and I'd add to your list a mass deportation of uh, immigrants could be another inflationary effect. It obviously, the, the Federal Reserve of the United States has a dual mandate of stable prices and of maximum employment. So any new policies that come online that have the potential to stoke inflation, that is something that the Fed has to pay attention to. And it could very much reshape how the Fed approaches interest rates over the next year. That Jerome Powell, Fed chair in August, told us the direction of travel is clear with interest rates and that direction of travel is down. That's a lot less clear today. Now, we don't, we don't know the details. We don't know the size of any of those programs that have been talked about. And Trump has talked about a lot of different kinds of programs. And so those details will matter. And we don't have them today. We don't even know what Congress is going to look like if the House is going to be Republican or Democratic. So there's still a lot of question marks. And I think how one of his big goals today, after they cut by 25 basis points, I think that's pretty much a given, is to say very little about going forward. They have a lot to digest now and think about before they make their next move. It sounds like there's lots of uncertainty then. Uh, one thing we do know is that uh, Donald Trump has been critical of the Fed before uh, and talked about having a more of a say in its decisions. Uh, do you think his election could affect how the Fed's independence is viewed? It, the, the independence of the Fed has come up in a discussion because of some of the comments that Trump made on the campaign saying that he would do a better job than members of the Federal Open Market Committee, saying that he would want some say in interest rate policy. Now, that got people really excited because the president having a direct role in setting interest rates is considered very bad monetary policy. But honestly, he doesn't have to have a radical new approach. He decides who is the Federal Reserve chair. He decides who is the vice chair of the Federal Reserve and also the vice chair of supervision who oversees the banking regulation. Now, those people are not going to change over right away. There's Jerome Powell has a year left after uh, Trump takes office in, as Fed chair, but personnel is policy. So who plays those important roles? That will have a really big effect on what the, the, the Fed looks like and what it does under Trump. Well, as you say, Jerome Powell, due to stay on as governor, but uh, again, Donald Trump has called him an enemy in the past. If he does end up going uh, before his term is out, what might that mean for the bank's policy direction? Well, I, Jay Powell has a thick skin, right? I mean, this is there's a lot of theater involved in the way uh, different groups in, in Washington D.C. interact with each other. So I don't, I don't think that any you know insults being hurled over Twitter are going to chase uh, Powell away. I do think we should be set up for the fact that the next Fed chair will be a different Fed chair. I don't, I don't think there's any reason to expect. Uh, continuity in that regard. And continuity has been in the past often a really important thing that happens at the Fed. When you see chairs go across different presidents, different political parties, and we should expect to see Trump put his, his thumbprint on, on the Fed. And that, that will be in all likelihood a pretty big and important change. Claudia, great to talk to you today. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. That's Claudia Sam, former Federal Reserve and White House economist.